Hi, welcome to the U.S. Embassy's special Music Buzz presentation in celebration of the U.S. election and democracy. I'm Josh, one of the cultural affairs officers here, and I'm so excited that you've joined us today. As millions of Americans go to the polls to cast votes in national, state, and local races, we're celebrating democracy and civic participation. I'm here in my hometown to cast my vote. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you'll participate in the governance of your community and participate in the next election in your community. Good, Good evening, evening everyone. everyone. My name is Bimol. And my name is Sarah. Welcome to the Spatial Music Buzz. In honor of the 2020 U.S. elections. Up first in this evening's program, we have Ambassador Miller delivering opening remarks. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the U.S. Embassy's celebration of Election Day in the United States of America. Thank you for joining us to celebrate a special day in America's civic life and the grand, noisy exercise of American democracy. There are many elections, not just for president, being decided today. The American People cast their votes for seats in Congress, for state governors, for hundreds of state senators and representatives, as well as judges, mayors, and district attorneys. For someone like me who loves this national discussion and political drama, it's like waking up as a kid on Christmas morning. The campaigns have been fierce and hard fought, as they always are. Adlai Stevenson, after being defeated by Dwight Eisenhower in the 1952 presidential elections, said, someone asked me as I came in, down on the street, how I felt. And I was reminded of a story that fellow townsman of ours used to tell, Abraham Lincoln. They asked how he felt after one unsuccessful election. He said he felt like a little boy who had stubbed his toe in the dark. He said he was too old to cry, but it hurt too much to laugh. I was reading David McCullough's book, The American Spirit, yesterday in his wonderful chapter on the American presidency. I've always found it interesting how, with few exceptions, American presidents have all done a good deal of complaining about the job and professed to not liking it. McCullough writes, it was so from the beginning. George Washington went to his place at the head of government, accompanied, he said, by feelings not unlike those of a culprit who was going to the place of execution. John Adams, Washington's successor, describing his inauguration to his wife Abigail, wrote, a solemn scene it was indeed, and it was made more affecting to me by the presence of General Washington whose countenance was as serene and unclouded as the day. Methought I heard him say, I, I am fairly out and you are fairly in. See which of us is happiest. Thomas Jefferson famously declared the presidency a splendid misery. Andrew Jackson called it a dignified slavery. Polk said it was no bed of roses. Abraham Lincoln thought himself unfit for the role. Grover Cleveland told a very young FDR when they met, boy, I hope you will never, ever become president. Harry Truman privately referred to the White House as the Great White Jail. When contemplating General Eisenhower winning the presidential election, Harry Truman said, he'll sit there and he'll say, do this, do that, and nothing will happen. Poor Ike, it won't be a bit like the army, he'll find it very frustrating. But then rarely was there a person who truly wished to let go of the office. Most have fought to their last breath to stay if they could. Not just for the love of power. More often for the power to do good for the nation we love. Only Theodore Roosevelt openly declared his love for the job. Nobody ever enjoyed the presidency as I did he boasted, and by all evidence, that was so. While president, I have been president emphatically. No matter who wins our presidential election, 
Our two great nations will continue to work together for the betterment of the people of the United States and Bangladesh and the world we are so privileged to share. The story of every democratic nation is its struggle, ongoing and imperfect, to live up to its founding principles and ideals. In 2021, Bangladeshis will have the opportunity to reflect on your remarkable nation's democratic journey as it celebrates its 50th year. American citizens do so today at the ballot box. As John F. Kennedy said, and I believe it applies to citizens of the United States and Bangladesh, for I can assure you that we love our country, not for what it was, though it has always been great, not for what it is, though of this we are deeply proud, but for what it someday can and, through the efforts of us all, someday will be. I hope you enjoy the program. Donabad and thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for your opening remarks. Sarah, who is going to be our first performer? Our first performer's name is Seth Glear. Um, and he is going to sing, This Land is Our Land. Um, he is a cultural ambassador for the State Department. So wow. let's hear from him. A one, two, a fiddle, here we go. <sighs> your land this land is my land from california to the new york island from the redwood forest to the gulf stream waters this land was made for you and me as i was walking that ribbon of highway i saw above me that endless skyway i saw below me that golden valley this land was made for you and me this land is your land this land is my land from california to the new york island from the redwood forest to the gold stream waters this land was made for you and me when the sun came shining i was strolling the wheat fields waving the dust clouds are rolling the fire was lifting a voice was chanting this land was made for you and me this land is your land this land is my land from california to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream Waters, this land was made for you and me. As I went walking, I saw a sign there and on that sign it said No trespassing, but on the other side It didn't say nothing And that side was made for you and me This land is your this land, land. This, land this land is my land From California to the New York Island the Redwood Oh, uh, Balam is going to be our second performer. He is a popular Bangladeshi rock star. He has over 26 years of experience in music industry. He has done over 700 stage shows at the national and international level. 
Whoa. Has he performed um, in the United States? Yeah, he's oh. been there. He has been there a couple of times and he performed there. Even we invited him at the American Center Music Buzz. He performed here as well. Oh my gosh, that's so wonderful. I cannot wait to hear his performance. So, take, take it, it away. away. Of course, uh, it was his one of the uh, most popular tracks in his career, and Bangladeshi people really liked this song. I have some questions to Sarah for oh. myself and for our audiences. Of course, Bamal, go ahead. All right. So, how long have you been here in Sarah, and what do you like most? Um. So I've been here for about three months now, and first. Uh, my favorite thing about Bangladesh is the people. The people are just so friendly and nice. Um, but I would say the second thing is the amazing milk tea. Have you? Do you like the milk tea too? Definitely, I like. Oh, we so all like. So good. Wow. So who do we have up next, Amal? Uh, Armin Musab. She is a 
very talented singer and composer from Dhaka, graduated from Berklee School of Music. Uh, oh, Berklee School of Music? Yes, oh, yes. I have lots of friends who went there. Really? Mm -hmm. All right, so up next, let's hear from Armin Musa singing Graceland. A hundred thousand miles she goes To find herself a brand new home She leaves behind the riches she knows To her Graceland she arrives Then dirty stares of the crowds The petty things people said out loud She leaves behind those horrid sounds To her Graceland she arrives hand as she walks onto this foreign land she'll make it here and that's the plan to her graceland she arrives She'd never had to make her own cup of tea But now she finally feels free To her Graceland she arrives To her Graceland she arrives And now she finally feels free Everybody, um, we just got carried away drinking this amazing milk tea and listening to this wonderful song. Um, Bamal, who do we have up next? Uh, we have Shopnil Shojib. He's a Bangladeshi young singer and a Tagore practitioner for more than a decade. Oh. He's a very uh, young and talented singer and popular, getting uh, popularity day by day. Who is Tagore? Tagore is uh, uh, one of the most prominent uh, Bengali uh, poet, uh, writer, uh, composer mm -hmm. of our Bengali uh, literature. Oh, okay. So, um, what song is the next artist going to sing? He is going to sing a Tagore song, Fule uh, Fule Dhole Dhole Bohe Ki Babai. Wow. Well, take it away. Oh, 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 oh,
Sarah, do you like sports? Oh, I love sports. Um, I actually used to play basketball. Wow. How about you? I like I like cricket because I used to play cricket while I was in village before coming to Taka. Oh, how so, many years? Uh, it, like four to five, six years. Like, oh. so, who is our next performer? Sarah? Our next performer, her name is Ashreem, and um, she is multi-talented. She plays sports. She also is a singer. And um, she was a sports exchange alumni of a State Department program. Wow, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Sarah, what song she is going to sing today? She's actually going to sing Country Road, a very, very popular song in the United States. It's actually my father's favorite song. My too. Oh. We also sing this song here at the American Center with students. So oh, we love really? this song as well. Okay, well take it away, Ashreen. so much country road take me home to a place i belong west virginia mountain mama take me home country road oh that was just such a great song by john denver thank you so much for joining our event tonight stay tuned for our next month music buzz